What's up guys, Jay's Two Cents here, and we're gonna be doing some RTX testing here really soon. And one of the things that we've done to kind of make testing easier for us is we keep all of our game library, well at least most of the big games, on an external drive that we can move from system to system. We keep this updated, which means any system we plug it into will have an updated game library. The problem is it's only a 250 gig and uh, we quickly exceeded that. So we're gonna be updating our storage to a 500 gig, which should be big enough for all the main titles we test when a new graphics card launches. So I thought, why not make a tutorial to help you guys see how to actually set up an external drive for your game library, how to clone the drive, and how to initialize a new drive on your system. Something that all goes hand in hand. All three of this has to be done today. And something I'm asked quite often from people is, I plugged in a new drive, Windows doesn't see it, what's going on? So we can kind of kill three birds with, well, three different stones, but whatever, I digress. We're gonna make one video showing you guys inclusive, inclusively, how this intro went downhill quick. Let's just get to it. Do you want to be cooler? Do you want to be more desirable? Well, you're in luck because right now you can own your very own Jay's Two Cents swag and immediately be the cool kid on the block. Max out your sex appeal by following the link down below. So we're gonna use Macrium Reflect for our cloning. This is not a sponsored video by them. This is a brand I've used for a while because it's free, which is the best part, especially if you only wanna do this once or twice, why pay for a license, especially a monthly? So Macrium Reflect, you need to download that. I'll put a link to it in the description below. Also too, we're gonna to be using uh, USB 3.0 sleds for our drives because like I said, we move it from system to system. So this will work though with any drive installed in any system where it's through a regular SATA cable or some sort of USB like this, USB 3, NVMe, you know, external drive enclosures, doesn't matter as long as the system sees it as a drive, so will reflect. So we're gonna go ahead and take our USB and plug it into our USB 3.0 hub here, which we have just so lovely hanging off the front of our system, very pretty and OCD well, triggering to be honest, but that's besides the point. And we're gonna plug in this guy right here as well. Now, if we go to our file explorer right here, you can see that our external SSD 256 only has 17 gigabytes left, but you might notice that the 500 gigabyte I mentioned is not showing up. The 237 gigabyte system drive that's on here is our main uh, Windows drive, which has the Windows logo. And then our 1.8 or our two terabyte, technically Western Digital Black drive is kind of our main storage drive. And you can see the 500 gig that we have in this enclosure is not showing up. So if that's the case for you, and you have a drive that shows up in the BIOS but doesn't show up in Windows, it's pretty simple. Go to your start menu, type disk, and you'll have create and format hard disk partitions pop up. Now here we should actually see our drive, but it's not, see here it is right here, it's unallocated. What that means is this, Windows can see the drive, but it doesn't have any allocation set to it. There's no drive path, there's no letter, none of that. It's pretty simple, right click, new simple volume, click next, you can tell it how, you can actually set a volume size too. So you can partition this if you want, obviously we want it one partition, click next, and then you can give it a drive letter. In this case, it automatically assigned F because that's the next sequential order in our current drive lettering. And we're just gonna go with that. Leave everything as default. You can name it here if you want. So we'll call it external games, just like it says on the letter, on the label there. Perform a quick format, finish. That's now blue, it now shows up down here in the bottom right hand corner, and we are good to go. So, next thing we're gonna go ahead and do here, and you can see right here in our file explorer. We're gonna open up Macrium Reflect. So the drive that's red here is the one that's nearly full. We're gonna click the checkbox right here, and then we're gonna click on here, clone this disk. Now this is our source, as you can see right there. Now we can actually do this with a Windows 10 drive as well. We, you know, the Windows partition, the Windows exact copy of the drive can actually be moved to another one. That's another video I'm gonna do on another date because the Windows 10 is actually kind of picky in the way that that works. Some software handles it very easily. Some other software you have to set some perimeters and if you don't set that right, then it will copy, but then Windows won't actually boot. You'll continue to get a blue screen. So we will. if you guys wanna see me do that video, make sure you comment down below to please show you guys how to do the Windows 10 clone. But now we need to set a destination. So select the disk, and we want the one that says right there, external games, and that is it. So pretty much now we're just gonna click finish. We can name it if we wanna name this, the backup definition. And what Macrim will actually do was save these perimeters, this setting, 
into its own file that you can then pull in and run the task again. This is useful for you to do things like backups or regular scheduled backups on a system. So if you had multiple drives in your system, you could just tell it run this every night and every night it will have a revolving backup. Again, a free piece of software that does that, pretty amazing. We're gonna go ahead and just call this again. Games. We're gonna click okay. And now it is going ahead, it says, fault warning, this drive will be overwritten. Of course, that's what we want. And now it is just gonna go through and do the cloning process. Obviously, this is gonna depend on how big your drive is, how fast your connection is, how fast your source is, and how fast your, your I already said your destination. So think about it this way. We're running through a USB 3.0. A decent amount of bandwidth, but obviously not as fast as if we were cloning, like say an M.2 to an M.2, that would be much, much faster. If we were writing to a spinning disc as a backup, then your max write speed is gonna be the max, or the max copy speed is the max write speed of the destination. Does that make sense? So if you have a faster drive writing to a slower drive, your max transfer rate is going to be the maximum write speed of your, of your destination. So in this case, because we're running two SATA 500 megabyte per second drives through USB 3.0, it should actually transfer pretty quickly but it could take up to a half an hour or an hour or more. So we'll go ahead and spare you guys that and we'll come back when it's done. A few moments later. So that took 25 minutes and 13 seconds to complete. You hit okay. I had verify selected, which is why it took a little bit longer because I have it verify all the information. And now we can close that. Now if we close reflect and we open up our file explorer here, check this out. You can see, wait a minute. All it did was copy over the same 238 gigabytes with only 17.7 left. That's because Macrium basically does a bit for bit clone of the drive and the partition that it sees. So even if I had a two terabyte SSD sitting right here, it would still show 238 gigabytes with an unallocated partition left over. So we're gonna go ahead and unplug our source drive. We can actually format that once we confirm everything's working here and then put that back into rotation. But if we go back to the disk management tool, which I showed you earlier, you'll be able to see that the rest of that partition of that drive is sitting there unallocated. So we could basically extend the initial partition that's sitting over here. So basically you just right click on the blue section, not the black one. If you create a new simple volume, now you've created a new partition. We want to extend the one that is currently existing to the rest of the drive. So right click, click extend volume, click next, and then we can just go ahead and say finish because we didn't give it an amount. It just said basically use the rest of the drive. There it is. Now we've got the full 465 gigabytes. So as you can see right there, 245 gigabytes free of our 465 gigs. So we basically doubled the drive as you would expect. Right click and we're gonna rename this back to our external games. Oops, I put an S in there. Games, there we go. So if you look at my external drive right here, you can see it's already got the Steam library there with the Steam apps and the common folder, which is where all of your games are installed because we did a clone. However, if you were installing a fresh external drive that you wanna start moving your games to or install on, then what you're gonna see is, uh, what I'm about to show you right now is exactly gonna to pertain to you. So what we're gonna do is go over to Steam, click the Steam button, and as you can see, none of my games are installed, none of them are white, they're all grayed out because basically Steam is saying, here's the games you own, but none of them are installed. We're gonna click on the Steam button, click on settings, go to the downloads, and then click on Steam library folders. Now by default, you're gonna see a Steam library installed on your C drive or whatever your main drive is where your operating system resides. And that's by default. You can't get rid of it, you can't delete it. It forces to be at least one install location, otherwise the program like Steam wouldn't know what to do with anything. So that's a default. But if you followed my advice on budget builds and you've got a small SSD, chances are that drive is gonna be full or you're trying to avoid filling it up, which is why you're installing to either a second drive or in our case, an external that we wanna take with us wherever we go. So if you click on add library folder, if you click the drop down, you can see all the drives that exist on your system are listed right here. So the D drive, which is where things were before, that spinning optical or that spinning hard drive, and then the G drive, which is where our external drive is right here, and that is where we already have games installed. So all I need to do right now is just highlight where it says Steam Library. So basically, you can see it made a path here, G, Steam Library, and basically now we're telling it to install games there. But what's gonna happen with Steam, it's gonna see that games are already installed there, and it's gonna automatically populate them inside of our gaming list. 
So Far Cry 5 is there, Hitman's there, Metro Last Light, Rise of the Tomb Raider, and everything is updated because we I actually keep this drive updated on a pretty regular basis. But it's pretty simple. I mean, the same thing is basically happens with Origin, although Origin's, Origin's got one additional step. When you actually give it the new save location where the game files are located, you've got to go and tell it to download and install that title. So if we have Battlefield 4 sitting on our drive, Origin's not gonna automatically say, hey, Battlefield 4 is there when you point to the drive. It's when you tell it to download and it starts moving files, it goes, wait a minute, these files are here, it will validate the files and then just populate the game in your folder. But that's pretty much it. That now means that this drive has our game library on it and we can take this with us. And as long as we keep it updated, any system we plug this into and point to this drive, our game library will be ready to go. So this is very useful if you are traveling, uh, you have a laptop that maybe doesn't have a lot of storage on it, but you can get yourself a one or two terabyte SSD at a, well, even a one terabyte SSD would hold my entire game library that I've got, which would be plenty big, and it has the speed of USB 3.0 or 3.1 if you want to do an NVMe uh, SSD through USB 3.1 Type C. Many laptops have USB Type C, and so do desktops now, so that's an even faster communication. But I find that just a standard USB 3.0 is more than enough when it comes to gaming. So anyway, that was just a quick tutorial I wanted to make because I've seen people ask me how we move game libraries around. Do you have to reinstall your games? And since we're getting ready to have to move it between three systems for RTX launch, I wanted to have my game library in one place rather than dealing with updates on three systems, which really kind of sucks. So that's that. If you have any more tutorials you'd like me to cover, make sure you sound off in the comments below or hit me up on Twitter, at Jace2Cents. I'm extremely active on Twitter, probably more active than I should be. Twitter's kind of dangerous. The internet's dangerous. For my, for my morale anyway at times. So let me know what other tutorials you want me to cover or video topics as we prepare for this holiday season. It's a good one for PC builders in Q4 of 2018. It's exciting. Get excited, because I am. <laughs> so excited. <laughs>